welcome to this episode of Eureka. His father passed away when he was just three to four months old. His mother, very young, a 22 year widow, but she was determined that she will make her son educated. With all efforts, sacrificing everything that she had, she made him to study. Today, he is the program director of uh, the uh, India TMT Coordination Committee and associate professor in Indian Institute of Astrophysics. He is a king of stars. He studies what the stars, galaxies and uh, stellar nebula are made up of. The guest today is Professor Ishwar Reddy and uh, welcome sir. Thank you very much. Thank you Having for joining us. Thank you. Sir, can you uh, tell us about uh, your childhood days, how, uh, you know, I mean, in this uh, nondescript rural village in Andhra Pradesh, you were able to make uh, and study? I am very thankful to my mother and particularly she is a role model to me, though she was not educated. And uh, particularly, uh, even now, I just always wonder uh, what was her resolve mm -hmm. and determination to yeah. stay put in an, at that young age, not going to back to her parents' home. Yeah. Mm. And taking care of my uh, uh, ailing uh, grandma mm -hmm. and these two small kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, you understand in the villages, uh, the male chauvinism and yeah, things yeah. like that. And in spite of that, uh, see, her resolve made uh, today. She was a single mother, in front uh, of you, single so. mother and she was able to, you know, she was oh, very determined that uh, you would be It's a very, very tough life, I tell you, because... Mm. When you, we have small patch of lands mm -hmm. uh, in the village and then uh, when the harvest comes and then um, we had to go to that uh, fields to take care of those and then my mother alone used to go and then I used to accompany. Mm -hmm. That was another reason she doesn't want to go to school in the beginning because <laughs> okay. I can help her uh, in the field, in the field yeah. and things like that because she was quite worried about worried. all of these things. So, uh, but the lucky I was and uh, at least she could get uh, um, convinced because of some people told her and it's important for for her to get me educated and then um, so uh, see education is supposed to be the real wealth and oh, yes. I suppose uh, you yeah. know I mean she is very important in that sense that uh, to have felt that and oh, then yes. to have ensured that uh, oh, yes, yes. you would have that. Yeah, yeah. That's very... Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The and I was told that uh, that area is also a drought prone area. It is a trying circumstances. Oh, what do you remember of that? Uh, oh, it is in Andhra Pradesh yeah. and uh, it's a Rayal Sima area and okay. you don't have uh, any rivers there. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so the agriculture and that is a rain... Agriculture is a basically rain dependent and mm -hmm. then mostly drought uh, prone, prone area. Mm -hmm. And um, we used to have very frequent droughts, and uh, it used to be very tough. We used to get uh, yearly income, something like 500 rupees, I remember. <laughs> it was very tough, and then my mother has to go all the time to money lenders, my, uh, and then get money. Yeah. And whatever land we had, uh, as soon as my father died, and then we thought of disposing of small, small uh, these things uh, to get rid of particular the interest. People mm -hmm. always ask interest, mm -hmm. but this is keep going on. Yeah. <laughs> so, even those things also made me to study because when I wanted to go to my fifth standard to um, high school, mm -hmm. and this is one of the arguments my one of the teachers made to my mother. Yeah. It's important for him to get educated at Who least. Who is that? Is uh, the, uh, Mr. Balana. Uh -huh. And uh, he stayed uh, some 10 kilometers from my village. Mm -hmm. And then my mother was very adamant now, you completed the, 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 uh, elementary school. Oh. So by that time I was very old, actually, 13 years old. Oh, okay. So you completed <laughs> in uh, your elementary school at 13 years? Yeah, because I joined at 8 or 9 years okay. old. Because oh, it's that, a village. So it's the village and oh. then nobody bothered about these things. And then, mm -hmm. so I took a bus, determined, mm -hmm. I wanted to get education, but I wanted to convince her. Because okay. there's no way in, within the village to convince. Because everybody says, well, what do you do? Why, why do you want to study? Why do you want to do? You don't get jobs and then this is the best thing to do. And my mother was trying to put me in the farming and mm -hmm. things like that. Then I found it's very tough. It's too hot, mm -hmm. <laughs> too tiring. 
And I, I made up my mind, this is very difficult to leave in these things. It's the best thing is to get education. Let us see what. So I went to his place, and then he had the harvesting season, and then he asked me, why don't you help him for two days? So your teacher, Balana, said that to work for two days in my home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because he is busy, because he can't okay. come. Yeah, yeah, Coming yeah, yeah. and then going takes one day for him also. So after two days of work there, and then I, we both together came, and then he mm -hmm. told my mother that, so this is very important for you. Forget about job and all those things. At least he will be helpful uh, understanding your uh, lending process and money. Otherwise, people will cheat you. Cheat, okay. So my mother was, okay. So the only the thing is my mother said, see, who is going to pay for all of these things and the bus? Because high school is some nine kilometers away. Then I said, don't worry about that. I will take care of it. Okay. So because I was... So where was your uh, high, I mean, uh, high school? Uh, I, like, so uh, the, the village is called Ramapuram mm -hmm. uh, in um, uh, Banaganapalli Taluka, okay. in the Karnul district. Karnul. And uh, this high school is in Kulim, Kulimigulla, okay. which is nine kilometers away from my village. Mm -hmm. So then I started going morning and then evening. So uh, you mean uh, you 19, went in uh, by walk? By walk, all just to save the money, because there is no other mode of transport. Yeah, so there was one bus, but it is expensive, and then I don't want because I promised my mother. So for nine don't kilometers go. morning, nine kilometers yes. evening, as a young kid yes, yes. going to high school, yes. perfectly. That's very, uh, perfectly. So all five years I did that. Then uh, after that, uh, where so did then you? I stood first in the school and then okay. the district, oh, and then I got uh, the scholarship from government, mm -hmm. some money, and then my mother was quite happy, and then people started, oh, well, this this guy has this done guy something, has something okay. and then my mother got that imagination, mm -hmm. okay, now it's up to you, study. Okay, so well, that that. Uh, so break. from uh, high school you went where? Like uh, so, I went the, uh, another nearby town, which is yeah. another forty kilometers. Mm -hmm. It's called Thadipatri. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, I thought of do uh, civil subjects, and then um, uh, professor is a not professor is a Ramasubaradi sir. Okay. He said, see the, what you need is now. You may not get jobs easily if you go for um, mm -hmm. other subjects, but if you do science, and then you may get. Okay, uh, we'll take a small break, yeah. and then we will uh, come back to uh, okay. the discussion. Okay. Yeah, we'll take a break, small break. Auguste Comte, a French philosopher, uh, argued that there is a limit to knowledge. We cannot know everything in the universe. And just to prove his point, rhetorically he asked, can we go near the sun? It's so hot, it's so far away. How do we then find what the sun is made up of? A Lot of people thought he had a point. But alas, in his own lifetime, a German chemist called Kirchhoff showed that just by looking at light, just by analyzing the light coming from stars and suns, you can know what they are made up of. The spectral study that uh, form one of the basic rock of the modern astrophysics. The guest we have today is an expert in that area who studies the composition of uh, galaxies and planetary nebula. Professor Ishwar Reddy from Indian Institute of Astrophysics. Welcome, sir, once again to this uh, program. Uh, you. Can you uh, uh, sort of elaborate, what is your research about the chemical composition of uh, galaxies? What do you do there? Can yeah, you? so when I joined the Indian Institute of Astrophysics as a PhD student, mm -hmm. and um, this is one of the problems, uh, uh, me and my, uh, is a professor, uh, Partha Saradi, mm -hmm. And he was also working on evolved stars. So okay. I thought of continuing that uh, uh, um, the research. Mm. And in 1980s, the, one of the, uh, the key problems people were wondering about was stellar evolution and stellar structure okay. and things uh -huh. like that. And within the stellar evolution, and there are, the, 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 there are some missing links okay. uh -huh. within that evolution. So, because you know this, uh, sun like sun is also one of the one of nearest the stars, star, yes. and it has life, sti life cycles, and it evolves, and then it becomes uh, red giant, and then super giant, and then it becomes planetary nebulae, and then finally it becomes a white dwarf. That's yeah, the death yeah. cycle. But it's one of those stages is when it becomes super giant, and then mm -hmm. planetary nebulae. Mm -hmm. This is a super giant. This is a planetary nebulae. Mm -hmm. So the evolution between here and here is not known. It's not uh, okay. Here it is a completely red giant, mm. spherical in nature, okay. completely. But here it comes, very bright, providing all nebular lines mm. and having spectacular shapes, different kinds of different. shapes. Different. How that this particular which is spherical, star, spherical, and acquiring this sort of thing. Okay. Huh. Morphology. Huh. So, looks like. The evolution from here to here is quite fast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
in the stellar uh, evolutionary cycles. It is estimated something like 10,000 years, 10,000 Oh, so you mean to say in 10,000 years from red giant to planet yeah, animals? Evolves. That is exactly the reason people are unable to pinpoint this, the stars in this stage. Mm -hmm. And then that time Europeans uh, launched the uh, infrared uh, sky survey. Mm -hmm. And it looks like all of these star, the stars in the missing link mm -hmm. get shrouded by a dust. Okay. Uh -huh. And they are not seen in the visible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they are all very faint. Mm -hmm obscured by the dust mm. and seen only in the far infrared. Okay, only in the infrared region? Far infrared, like not even in the infrared. Yeah, okay, far infrared region. Yeah, 12 okay. micron and uh, okay. uh -huh. uh, 60 micron, 100 micron. Mm. So, uh, we made use of the data mm. and to see the, uh, the stars in this and characterized what could be the, uh, the dust temperatures mm -hmm. if the stars are in this missing link. We know planetary nebulae. Okay. We know that this thing. So, you know the starting point, you know the ending, the ending point, point. And then so in between what? Okay, what? So, that is a strategy. Okay. So, you survey a large number of stars and then get those potential candidate which are in the missing link. You also were uh, studying the uh, chemical composition of uh, galaxies, right? Like yeah. uh, that is one of another uh, area. Yeah. Can you? Yeah. So, so from this we, we got uh, quite a bit of uh, nucleosynthesis aspects, stars mm -hmm. in this period. Because once you know the stars here, identify because these stars are coming from almost like our sun and then evolve asymptotic giant branch. Mm -hmm. Because much of the nucleosynthesis of the interior happens in these super giants. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because the hydrogen goes into helium, helium goes into the carbon, and then the many elements get formed Hooked in these in stars. The, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. And how do we know the, uh, the, 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 the quantities so that okay. we can infer what sort of nuclear reactions happening inside? Mm -hmm because we do not see them, because yeah, they are yeah. very faint. That is why this became very important in the missing link. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, basically it means to say that… So, what uh, happened in the past that okay. we know through these things. That is a… That's yeah. So, uh, that is a very key. So, a lot of objects we identified and then studied much more detailed. Mm -hmm. So, we in fact got quite a number of S process elements, it is called barium, how they built up, because these neutrons built up on uh, iron, iron is the seed. Okay. So, they build up all with the neutrons and then go to higher and higher elements. Mm -hmm. So, how these higher elements, like heavy elements, heavy like elements are barium and yttrium, zirconium, europium, all these things are formed. And once they form and then because of the dust, you know, it, it spreads to the… spreads into the interstellar medium out of which again starts form but with a slightly different composition. Mm -hmm. So, this is the process from these photospheric abundances to go back and then see what happened in the center of the nucleus. This is a one aspect when the stars evolved. See, so, another aspect… Some of your uh, friends were saying that uh, when you were doing your PhD in uh, Indian Institute of Astrophysics, yeah. you were the costliest student. Oh, yeah. What is that? Oh, yeah. So, so that was because, see, when I was in um, MSc uh -huh. doing… Um, uh, Where were you doing your MSc? Uh, Venkateswara University. Okay. Tripati. So, uh -huh. Tripati. I was there and… Uh, uh, actually, I thought of going for IIS mm -hmm. that time, which uh, okay, is the Indian uh, yeah, administrative yeah. service. But then um, uh, I got a letter from IIA uh, for um, uh, writing this exam. So, the, the IIA was first time conducting Indian this exam. Indian Institute of Astrophysics. Uh, uh, yeah, I, yeah, Indian Institute of Astrophysics Bangalore was conducting a um, uh, nationwide exam mm -hmm. to recruit PhD, PhD students. students. Okay. And um, they have initial screening based on marks and things like that. And then consistent uh, uh, this thing. So, then we went there uh, to write this exam. Some there are 100 people wrote exam and then um, I was one of them uh, chosen for an interview. Uh, 10 people were chosen. 10, okay. They, out of that and then uh, next day I had to stay back and then um, they chose again 4 people out of it. So, because they spent a lot of money. A lot of money in okay. uh, getting these people there, writing okay. exams and all those things. So, out of four and then two people, who I think one is from IIT Delhi and then IIT Kanpur and then okay. they left for states. Okay, for something else. states. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Another guy left for some M-Tech. Okay. So, I was the only one. So, you were the one in the hundred. <laughs> <laughs> one in the, yeah. So, it's a lot of screening, all yeah, those yeah. and then it's too expensive. So, okay, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. That's uh, we'll continue to have a conversation with you which is very interesting, very yeah. exciting, very yeah. illuminating. Yeah. But we'll take a small break yeah. and then we'll uh, come back to uh, okay. the discussion. Okay. Yeah, we'll take a break, small break. Welcome back to this uh, Eureka show. The guest uh, we have today is uh, Professor Ishwar Reddy from uh, Indian Institute of Astrophysics. 
He is also the program director of the uh, India TMT Coordination Committee. We are talking to him and in this section, we will uh, discuss with him about the 30 meter telescope, which is a futuristic telescope in which India is proposing to be a part. This 30 meter telescope is huge, not just huge, really huge. Imagine a mirror which will be one third of a football field. Imagine a telescope that will be 100 times more powerful, you know, which can resolve than any uh, ground based uh, telescopes that are there today. That is TMT. And uh, the guest today that we have with us, Professor Ishwar Reddy is the uh, India coordinator. Welcome, sir, once again to this uh, show. Thank you. Uh, can you just elaborate uh, why this 30 meter telescope? We just built a telescope at Hanley, uh, a huge telescope. So, why do we need uh, such a telescope now? Yeah, basically you need uh, the larger and larger telescopes because one thing is you, you need to reach uh, beyond these the existing telescopes and also the, you need to uh, study the, the, the more details about the objects in the universe. For example, in India what you said is in Anle we built, that's the 2 meter class telescope in India. Mm -hmm. And then current, That's just two meters. Just two meter. Okay. And um, so in India, most uh, the first 2.3 meter telescope we built indigenously. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the largest telescope for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. And now Aries is going to build a 3.6 meter telescope, mm -hmm. which is going to be the uh, use um, operational uh, by end of this year or okay. uh, the next year, uh, in the early next year. So, so the the basic two reasons are. To, it's a curiosity and what is there beyond all of these telescopes. So when you increase this aperture, then you increase the capacity of the telescope uh, collecting area. So the collecting area always goes to D square, so okay. you know it. Well. So when you say, the, now the current largest telescopes in the world are 10 meter class telescopes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the, when you go to 30 meter telescope and then you are increasing the collecting area by 10, so okay. then it will become 100 times much powerful. Yeah. yeah, and particularly this TMT is not just a uh, classical telescope. Mm. In the sense, it, it is going to be integrated adaptive optics. So it's going to have some unique features. Which unique are very features. Yeah. So then the, you are collecting uh, the sensitivity. That means with the same amount of time, you get the same amount of the light. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this telescope goes to uh, d to the power of 4. Okay. So, it's a huge jump from, from, the, normal. Ten, yeah, from the normal classical telescope. In the classical telescopes, because you are uh, limited by atmosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, that's this, why the stars twinkle. Twinkle. Because, yeah. That's why the stars twinkle. So, in, this, in certain wavelengths, the uh, TMT is going to act like a space telescope. Okay. So, it will uh, it'll be as if the yes. stars are not twinkling. It will be yeah. as if yes. there is no atmosphere. There is no atmosphere. Uh, uh, yeah, the diffraction limited images you are going to get. So that is what is the adaptive I mean, the adaptive uh, optics. Optics that yeah, is. That's uh, the new technology which is going to be uh, uh, implemented in this telescope. In this telescope. Yeah. Uh, who are the collaborators in this? Uh, so uh, see, the, uh, within India, the, these three institutes spearheading this mm -hmm. effort. That is, uh, Indian Institute of Astrophysics and uh, Inter University Center for uh, Astronomy and Astrophysics. That's called Ayuka Pune. Yeah. And Aryabhata Research Institute there in um, Nainital. Mm -hmm. These are the three institutes which are leading this effort. Uh, so the three leading astronomy institutions in India are part of this. Part of this. Uh -huh. Part of this. But of course, this is a pan India uh, program. Mm -hmm. But officially, these are the three institutes three, which, which are. are uh, okay. the, the what about the international level? Because it's yeah, an international project. Yeah, it's right? an international right. project because this project is a uh, multi billion dollar project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, astronomy community is not too large. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, they thought of um, such investments requires the global effort. Mm -hmm. So the uh, astronomy institutes in Japan, China, Canada, and USA, and now India, are these three, uh, these five are partners in the project. So five countries are partner in this partner uh, international in this uh, program. Yeah, and this project is going to come um, uh, in Hawaii. It's mm -hmm. a dormant a volcano area, but it's not now dormant. So this is a home to the, uh, currently all most of the large telescopes. Like Keck telescope. Keck telescope, yeah, Subaru by Japan yeah, okay. and things like that. 
and this is one of the best sites. Also so it's going to be like a telescope park. That's what essentially yeah, it's. Yeah, uh, probably yes, yeah. yes, yes. So thirty meter is going to be there. So because of the climatic conditions are better. I mean, it's a higher yeah. peak, so you can you know go up in the atmosphere. Yeah. These are all the. Yeah. One is the the height. We also have the elevations. For example, Hanley is one of yeah, the height. Big. Yeah, one of the best sites too. But what uh, makes a difference? Uh, uh, Hawaii is the seeing condition. Seeing okay. is the level of uh, turbulence in the atmosphere. Okay, the turbulence is much ah, less. Because it's an island and then surrounded by entire ocean mm -hmm. and then uh, that turbulence is much less. Much less, okay. It's in sub arc second level. Mm -hmm. And when you are putting such expensive telescopes, that is the key. Better to place it. Better right to place, place and then better to um, incorporate the new technologies like adaptive optics too. Yeah. So. Uh, see, one of the things that people were asking is that this is not the only international project of uh, telescope. There are also other, uh, you know, big telescope projects. Mm -hmm. Then uh, why did we choose uh, TMT? Yeah, in the beginning it was, uh, I think, 2007. Um, uh, there are three major projects. One is um, European extremely large telescope. That's uh, all the European countries uh, and Brazil. And then um, there is another uh, giant Magellan telescope, which is Australia and South Korea and then uh, American universities. Mm -hmm and uh, the TMT project. This is, uh, so all of them approached uh, Indian astronomers and then um, institutes uh, whether we are interested to get into this project. So the, we had many number of national meetings among the communities and thought this is very important. At least India should join one of those projects so that we can jumpstart uh, Be at the international, international level. level. And then um, the building on our own is going to be extremely difficult. We can't put some 10,000 uh, crores on these projects and then um, so that's one of the reasons. So once that is done, and then DSC thought, okay, now choose one, one project mm -hmm. and uh, which suits um, our needs well. So uh, then the TMT is the one which uh, happened to be a good project for us. Particularly, the, the TMT uh, agreed that um, for large, most of our contribution is in kind. Okay. So our contribution to the uh, TMT is not going to be only in cash, but no. it's going to be in Com kind. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, mostly in kind. And also we could negotiate with the project that um, we wanted to have these key items. Okay. So that this is a very important for us because we wanted to get domain knowledge in this. Mm -hmm. So from the beginning we can participate and then acquiring that technology and then we can easily implement medium-sized telescopes like uh, 10 meter, 15 meter. So can we just elaborate, uh, you know, what kind of in-kind uh, contribution yeah. that we are looking at from India, I mean... So uh, the India is now uh, the agreed to provide um, entire active system of the telescope. Mm -hmm. That is um, a portion of segments, mm -hmm. we are doing it. That's, that's important. So how many segments in total is the there? Total, okay, this is 30 meter diameter consists of 492 segments. 492 92 segments. Segment. Uh -huh. And each segment size is 1.4 meter, 4-4 okay. uh -huh. four, four meter. So it's basically like, uh, you know, a, a small number of small pieces, small put, together pieces put together to make a 30 meter. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, the key is how to make all these 492 meters act as a single meter. Okay. Uh -huh. That is the technology. Mm -hmm. So there is no way we can make one single meter. Yeah, because it will be too heavy. Big, yeah. And if you want to get that accurate uh, astronomy, there is no way. And we had to go with this. And if you go with this, you require very complex technology. Mm -hmm. Make them 492, act as a nanometer level, nanometer level, accurate. So, so that both should align to each other exactly at a nanometer level, you know, yeah. right? Yeah. All the time, uh -huh. so that you can get perfect image. Perfect there. image. Yeah. So, one part of segments we are doing and the entire supporting system we are doing, that is, for example, now these are all segments. Mm -hmm. And how do we know these segments are moving uh, relatively from each other? Okay. So, we are doing an entire sensor system. Okay, there will be sensors at the edges. Edges. Which will uh, sort of ensure that uh, they, they are... Ensure very... that, oh, my neighbor moved some 10 nanometer from me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Shear, up and down, any of these things. Mm -hmm. Then that sensor system we are building and okay. uh, uh, with the industry partners mm -hmm. and then we prototyped them and then now we got very good reports from Jet Propulsion Lab. Mm -hmm. So, and the third party. So, which means that uh, what we have fabricated is uh, sort of internationally standardized and accepted. Yes. And then okay. certainly we are going to produce them under mass production. Mass production. During okay. the production, once we, we become full partner in the project. So, then that sensor information goes to actuators because now the information is available, then 
you need to have push these mirrors. Something that will uh, align them together. Align them, all of them together. Mm -hmm. So the entire actuator, entire actuator system is ours. Okay. So again, um, uh, with the industry partners, the different partners, and then we produce some um, 10 prototypes, and then which have been now sent to Jet Propulsion Lab. They are doing very various life tests on these things. So basically, which means that we are making some portion of mirrors, some number yeah. of mirrors. Yes. All the sensors. Yes. All, all the, the actuators, actuators yeah. which means a lot of electronics. Yeah, electronics, app, electronics, and mechanics. And micro mechanics. Yeah, yeah. Yes, mechanics. So, which would also mean that uh, there'll be some spin-off from this, you know, like uh, our industry uh, yeah, capabilities. Yeah. So, when do we so, expect the uh, telescope to be up in uh, operational? Yeah, this is go uh, groundbreaking is now scheduled on 7th October. 7th October. Okay. Next month. Next month. Uh -huh. And... Uh, the, the ramp up work is going to start mm -hmm. and then once all the partners sign up and then the work is going to pick up in uh, 2000 uh, in the 15 april onwards and then now it is scheduled to, the telescope is going to be construction is going to be completed by 2022 2022 2023 so it's a it's a about a decade, uh, decade. project because it's a huge oh, uh, it's a huge and complex uh, because it's one and of the international kinds. facility in which india would be an equal partner uh, it's a 10% partner in the project mm -hmm. so but in every respect we are equal equal so in, in the sense of uh, we'll be part of the we have our voting rights uh, and yeah. everything so it's, it's a, a very interesting i mean yeah. in the sense that uh, uh, we as a nation, about uh, 60 years ago, when yeah. uh, we became independent, science we took up as one of the important areas that yeah. we should concentrate. Uh, yeah. In fact, the first Prime Minister said that make friends with science. Oh, yeah. And uh, that's what is going to solve our problems. And now we are not only doing science within the country, but we are also partnering with international agencies yeah. to uh, yeah. you know, be part of the global uh, science community. And uh, we are very glad that uh, you, coming from a small, non descript village from Andhra Pradesh is heading the India team and we thank you for being with us in this Eureka program much. and I'm sure that uh, we'll do uh, honors oh, and yeah. uh, excellence in this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.